Welcome to BaseballGuys.com. I'm your host and around the horn, Ray Flowers. Baseball, baseball, baseball. Yeah, we're wearing a 49ers hat and the season's getting close to getting underway, but we're still talking baseball here at BaseballGuys.com. And I want to start out with Derek Jeter. Now, Derek Jeter got his 3,000 hit a while ago and everyone kind of started to forget about him, writing him off as saying he's just having a horrible season. But guess what, folks? Derek Jeter's got a six-game hitting streak during which he's hitting 444. That pushes his season-long average up to 290. And since he had that 3,000th hit in 128 bats, he's batting 344. Yeah, demise of Derek Jeter, overblown story. He's not the player he once was. He's not the hitter he once was. But again, he's hitting 290. He's scoring runs. He's in double digits and steals. He's still going to have a decent season at the shortstop position for anyone not named Derek Jeter. Hopefully you didn't get up, give up on him because, again, he's been playing very, very well of late. Now, the Royals made some big news, and it's not often the Royals make big news, so we want to mention here at BaseballGuys.com, they signed Jeff Francoeur to a two-year deal. Now, if you look at Francoeur's numbers this year, it makes all the sense in the world. He's hitting great. He's on 20-20 pace. But I got news from your Royals fans and Royals front office. Don't know if this is a good choice. The Royals have tons of young talent. A guy like Lorenzo Cain, we haven't even seen play this year, who's been stuck in the minors. So they signed a two-year deal with Frank Cordy. He plays good defense. He's got a cannon for an arm. And again, he is on 20-20 pace. But the last time he hit 20 home runs was 2006. He has never stolen 10 bases in a season before this year. And for all the good he's done this season, his 329 on base percentage, still big league average. Don't know the dollar figures yet, but I'm going to bet the Royals overpaid for a guy who's having, in my opinion, a career season, a solid big league player, but not necessarily a difference maker in any stretch of the word. Irvin Santana hasn't been a difference maker all season until the last month and a half when he has been phenomenal. The last six times he's taken the hill, he's gone seven and two-thirds innings each of those times. In fact, he's had multiple complete games during that stretch. He's gone five and one in those six outings, allowing seven earned runs. Yeah, that's right, barely one per game. He is as locked in as any starting pitcher in baseball right now. If you held on him or you picked him up off the waiver wire before this start, consider yourself lucky. He looks aces. Frank Francisco getting another chance to close for the Blue Jays. Now, Francisco only is in this role because John Roush is out having appendicitis. Uh, he'll hopefully miss three weeks. That's what the Blue Jays are expecting at this point. If Francisco does a good job in that interim span, perhaps he holds on to the role. Big arm, 95 mile an hour fastball, strikes out more than a batter per inning, usually keeps the walks under control. He's been my bet as the best option they've had there, though he has had some ups and downs like most members of that Blue Jays bullpen. Mike Napoli. Someone give Mike Napoli 500 at bats. Now at the start of the season we had all the issues with Napoli. He started off great. Then the Rangers for whatever reason stopped playing him. Well guess what folks? The guy is on a tear yet again. Since the All-Star break, a span of 27 games. He's got an OPS of 1145. He's got seven home runs. He scored almost a run per game with 24 runs in those 27 games. And he's batting 390. Over the course of the season, 255 at bats, basically half a season, 294, 19 home runs, 49 RBIs. That means over 500 at bats, Mike Napoli is on pace to hit roughly 300 with 40 home runs and 100 RBIs. Like I said at the start of the season, like I said once the season began, someone give this guy 500 at bats. I don't care if you put him at first, I don't care if you put him at DH, let him hit. The guy has an absolutely massive stick. And then three batters that have really struggled with their sticks of late. The first one is Howie Kendrick. He had his first home run in 40 games last night. That's good news. Obviously, he's not a power hitter, but at least he drove one into the seats last night. Dustin Pedroia's only got one home run in his last 18 games. Again, not another extreme power hitter. A guy you look at for about 20 pops, so that's a little bit of a long drought for him. And then Adrian Gonzalez. He's got one home run in 33 games. Now, most people, because of the great batting average and the hot start and all the runs he's driven in, have overlooked the fact that Gonzalez is only on pace for about 24 home runs this season. Before the year started, I said, be careful of Adrian Gonzalez. I didn't believe the hype. Totally wrong in terms of his ability to drive runs in and the batting average. However, it appears I was totally right about the fact that I said, look, don't expect this guy to hit 40 plus home runs like everyone was saying. As I just mentioned, he's not even on pace to hit 25. I'd also warn about the batting average, right at the top of the American League, obviously. Um, it's really been driven by batting average and balls in play. Uh, he is batting only 245 of late, and I think that's a slide we might see extend itself a bit. 
The reason being that 385, 385 batting average on balls in play for the course of the season is about 64 points above his career mark. When that regresses, and it certainly could, he might have a hard time holding on to that American League batting title championship. I'm Ray Flowers with BaseballGuys.com. Thanks for joining me on Around the Horn. I'll talk to you all again really soon.